In uncertain days, it is important to remember that our world is getting ready to meet God. We are all getting ready to meet Him. The King is coming. Today, we join Scott Pauley in walking through the final book of the Bible, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Could I remind you what the title of this book is? It is The Revelation of Jesus Christ. You know, you can get uh, a little overwhelmed, frankly, overcome with all of the details of the prophecy and the weightiness of the judgment. Honestly, these are, these are heavy things we're studying, but isn't it wonderful how the Lord just seems to interrupt uh, his own prophecy throughout this book just to bring you back to himself, just to, just to reveal himself yet again, just to uh, bring some light into the darkness and some hope into the despair. I want to tell you, I love the Lord. I'm so grateful that for God's people, there's always hope. Revelation chapter 10 is one of those beautiful, bright spots in this revelation of judgment. Because Revelation 10 brings us full circle back to Christ, back to the Lord Jesus. In fact, it's only 11 verses long. And in some sense, it takes you all the way back to the first verse of the book. Do you remember how Revelation started? Revelation 1.1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So, in the ver very first verse of the book begins with Jesus and John. Jesus and John. When you come to Revelation chapter 10, guess who you find? Just Jesus and John. Isn't it wonderful how the Lord can take the whole world and bring it down to just you and Him? All that's going on in the world, but bring it down to you and the Lord. And that's what you find in Revelation chapter 10. It breaks itself into two parts. First of all, in Revelation chapter 10, verse 1, down to verse number 7, we have a picture of Jesus. It says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. May I tell you, this is not just any angel. No, this mighty angel we believe to be the Son of God. Now, the word angel here used, of course, in the sense of God's messenger, and uh, in his description, we see who he is. And because the Bible says uh, that he's clothed with a cloud. Well, remember, God is the one who girds himself with a cloud, the Shekinah glory cloud. He has a rainbow upon his head. The rainbow is always connected to God and God's promises. Uh, his face, like the sun, literally glowing with the glory from the throne room. His feet is pillars of fire, uh, indicating holy justice and judgment. Our God is a consuming fire. He has in His hand a little book. Well, remember Revelation chapter 5, only one was worthy to take the book and open the book. That was the title deed of the universe. It belongs to only one, and that's the Lord Jesus. Oh, but here's the ultimate. He sets His right foot upon the sea and His left foot on the earth. What's He doing? He's asserting His dominion. He is saying on earth what has already been declared in heaven, and that is it all belongs to Him. Only one person could put his feet on earth and sea at the same time. Only one person could put his feet upon something as unstable as the sea to start with. You remember our Lord Jesus was the one who walked on the water. Well, friend, he's going to rule over it someday. He is going to plant his feet on land and on sea, and he's going to declare once and for all that it all belongs to him. In verse 3, cries with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. Oh, this is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Remember, God's voice thunders. So God speaks from heaven, this mighty, powerful voice. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So the Lord says to John, Look, John, there's many things I'm wanting you to write down and make plain, but there's a few things. We're just going to save that for later. Aren't you glad for the child of God? There's always more to come. I read this week the story of a, 
a very wealthy man who took it upon himself to support a, a very poor pastor many generations ago. And instead of giving him a lump sum of money, he would send him money incrementally, and it always had a note with it that simply said, more to follow. <laughs> May I tell you, that's the case with our God. He gives grace and then more grace. There's always more to follow. The Lord always saves the best for last. So for everything we know about the Lord, and for everything we know about what the Lord's going to do, I want to tell you, it's going to get better. The Lord has sealed some things for us to discover when we get to the other side. So, in the opening seven verses of Revelation 10, we see Jesus. But then, in verse number 8, we see John. He says, And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Now this is not an unusual sight. You might think, well, I've never seen a man eat a book before. But in fact, we do that every day when we feed on the Word of God. A Jeremiah in the Old Testament said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. You see, for those who know the Lord... And the message of grace and mercy, the Word, brings great joy and great blessing and great fulfillment and nourishment to our souls. Uh, but here, the book that is being eaten is the book of judgment. It's a book of God's wrath. It declares everything that's coming on the earth. And that's why when John ate it, there was joy in eating it and feeding on the Word. But once he had digested it, once he understood it, it brought great bitterness bitterness in his inner man, a vexation. Yet there's a great application here for us, and it is this, that we should constantly be feeding on God's truth, constantly feeding on God's Word. That's what we're doing in this Bible study. We're, we're coming to what God says. Look, who cares what man says? And who cares what we think about what's going on in the world? What does God say? Revelation 10 is a reminder that Jesus Christ is over all, and that John, the servant, has one responsibility, and that is to feed on the truth and then share it with others. Here's how Revelation 10 ends with this great hope, even for John. The Bible says, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I'm sure John thought Patmos was the end of the road for him. This was it, but it wasn't. No, there was a fuller ministry, a larger ministry. I would say in some ways that ministry is still being fulfilled today. John at this moment is prophesying to us, uh, to different people and different nations and different tongues and different kings out of what he's written under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I'm simply saying that in the end, the Lord Jesus is going to rule and reign. In the end, God is going to have his way. In the end, the Lord's servants are going to be cared for and used in the end, there's always victory in Jesus Christ. So yes, yes, there is judgment on this wicked world. Yes, there will be a final judgment on the devil, praise God. But yes, there is victory for all of those who will trust and follow Jesus Christ. I hope you're on the winning side today. And if you are on the winning side, take hope and take heart. Keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus. Keep your mind fixed on Him. Realize that in the end, the Lord is going to make all wrongs right. You see, we've read the back of the book, the end of the story, and we know who wins. Praise God for Jesus, and praise God for what He revealed to us through John. The purpose of all Scripture is to see God. In Revelation, the curtain is pulled back and we are reminded not to simply look at world events, but to look to Christ. We hope you will join us next time as Scott Pauley continues our study through this amazing book of the Bible. You may also join us right now for additional studies and a library of helpful resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. You will find several new features at our online home, and we trust they will be a blessing to you as you walk with God. Plan to visit us each day at enjoyingthejourney.org and we look forward to returning to Revelation on our next broadcast. Keep your eyes on Christ and look up. The King is coming.